Football team coming in here, uh, especially on the defensive side. And, um, you know, they played an outstanding game, so really both both defenses played pretty well. So, you know, tough to tough to swallow, but uh, you know, we didn't do enough to win the football game, make the plays you need to, and, and uh, credit to them, they were able to do that. So, you know, we'll head into a bye week, three and three, and uh, just reassess things and try to take advantage of that and get ready for the second part of the season. So, I'll throw it out for questions. This is the... you know what uh, some of the, most of the players kind of took ownership of this as they have win or lose for a long time and said put it all on execution. But was this loss more about maybe not as execution was part of it, but was scheme coaching just as much of a part of the defeat, or was it all their execution or lack thereof? Yeah, I think that's part of every every game probably is you know scheme coaching and how players play. That's what it gets down to. So. You know, again, credit to them. They've been doing a good job, and they did a good job today and tonight. Uh, Illinois has, and uh, you know, we didn't do well enough. This isn't the first time that we've been talking about lack of offense and a loss. Why have we not seen improvements in games? Yeah, it's a fair question. I mean, yeah, nine six game. You'd probably say both offenses were a little bit lacking, but uh, that, that's disappointing. I'm not sure we took a step forward tonight. I felt like we did last week with the offense. Uh, tonight, not the case. And, you know, credit to Illinois, they're, they're part of that, but then, uh, you know, we're going to play other good defenses too along the way. Kurt, to kind of take a step back in the long term, in the last calendar year, you guys have been held to seven or fewer points six times. The offense right now is among the bomb yardage-wise in the country. I know you said earlier this week that you wouldn't consider making a mid-season coaching change, but is this something you're going to contemplate or just look at during the bye week? Uh, making a change? It, potentially no. making a no. change. No. We won ten games last year. If you're aware of that, but uh, so I look at that, and uh, we've won a lot of games since 2015. So, you know, we're not doing well enough right now. I guess fairly obvious, and we're gonna you know, work on solutions, figure out what we can do to get better. I asked you this uh, a few games ago, but how did this offense get to this point where scoring and just yardage in general is such a chore? Oh. You know, I think part of that show tonight, you know, we've got some issues up front right now. We're young and inexperienced. Uh, again, I thought we made progress last week in that regard. Uh, tonight, not so much. You know, we couldn't run the ball uh, very successfully and didn't protect when we had to. So, but it's not all on them. I mean, it's a, it's a team thing. And uh, right now, we're certainly more experienced on the defensive side, and that's showing. So we'll just uh, we'll keep working and work through it. Did you get any explanation on why Spencer slide and hit to the head wasn't a targeting penalty? Yeah, they just said it wasn't. And, you know, the replay looked like it wasn't a hit to the head. It looked like he got, got him more in the chest area. So they called a personal foul, and that, that's probably appropriate. A non-sportsmanlike conduct, which assistant was that? That's, you know, one of our assistants. I mean, we had a player on the field, too, so we got two of them on the same play. And that, that's not acceptable. That's just a lack of poise. Was that Brian? It was one of our assistants. Well, we know who the player was, but like, aren't we told who the coach was? Did they announce the player? I didn't. They always do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was a coach. Watch the tape. You'll see. In the in the red zone, you guys had had the ball at the five, and then there was the like reverse and, and everything like that. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, of course. Sure. But but what what did you think of? calling a play like that at that juncture. They're great when they work, and uh, yeah, when they don't work, they're not so great. So obviously, the guy did a good job getting up the field and containing. You ever felt like, does this bring back any situation like this before you get seven offensive touchdowns for six games? Because like, you've held five teams to 10 points, so you're three and three. Yeah, it's frustrating. Yeah, it's frustrating. I think everybody's probably frustrated. To see the unevenness. I mean, the defense is out there. I mean, holding people to nine points, uh, losing ten to seven earlier in the year. I mean, how do you keep the team together and persuade them? You know, to stay well, I think you know we have good players, but I think more importantly, we have good people, and uh, they've worked hard. They believe in each other, and they encourage each other. That's what good teams do. And yeah, you know, we're trying to fight through something right now, and that's that's what we'll continue to do. That's what teams do. Along those same lines, this season is broken up into two six-game stretches. Yep. What was your initial message to the team going into the bye week and then also knowing that you have a very tough opponent on the other side of the 
Not that many people ask for it. Um, just what your message was to the team initially going into the bye week, and then especially now that you're a very tough opponent on the other side. Yeah, I mean, we got six tough opponents, and that, that's something um, came up this week. There was a headline about, you know, all of a sudden this looks like a tough game. And I just told our players, I said that just, and it's no offense to anybody, but it's just kind of a reflection of the way people look at the world. Like they already know uh, in the off season who's going to be good and who isn't. So, you know, football, football unravels itself and the seasons unravel themselves. And my message to our team was that, uh, you know, you shouldn't be judging anybody until you start preparing for those people and see what they actually look like at any given time. So we're, we're sitting here right now, we're three and three. We got a week to figure things out. Uh, best we can. We're not going to get, you know, Calvary's not coming, so we'll try to figure out what we can do and do more effectively. Um, and then brace up for the next six weeks. But we knew they're all going to be tough, and that, that's how I look at it. Like, you know, moving forward, uh, we do have some strengths on our team. We're going to have to show up what are the weaknesses we have and see what we can do. And then it's a new six game season, and uh, we'll just take it a week at a time. Thank you. Oh, go yeah. ahead. To follow up on that, mm -hmm. a lot of players talked about, you know, 10 weeks of football getting the bodies healthy was going to be a big thing. Yep. Just looking at that, players that are injured, how much of a step forward do you think the team can take health-wise um, during the bye week? Yeah, that's a decision I made a while ago, um, earlier in the week, just how we're gonna approach this week. So that hasn't changed. You know, Losing tonight's disappointing. I think the first thing we have to do, it has been 10 straight weeks of uh, you know pretty rigorous uh, football. So letting our guys get caught up physically is gonna be hopefully beneficial. We'll see what we can do to improve things and uh, you know see what we can do coaching you know see if we can coach a little bit better here than the last six weeks so we'll stick with the plan I mean I think we have a good plan right now and work the younger guys a little bit more than the older guys and uh, try to be a better football team to get back at it again you mentioned earlier in the season that you're not going to make wholesale changes can't do that during the season does that still remain the case now or does the first loss to Illinois since always change that yeah, I don't think we played them somewhere in there too. I mean, just you know, for the record. But uh, and again, I'll, I'll just say you know, like every season's a new season. Every team's a new team, and you know, these guys have a good football team. So, and we knew that coming in. We knew that. Uh, had a lot of respect for them, and uh, so it's a loss. It's a tough loss. But no, I mean, we're not, we're we are who we are right now, and uh, you know, we can't change dramatically. But hopefully, we can find some ways to be more effective. To the point earlier, I mean, I, I think, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand we need to score more points. What can you do to? The criticism of, of cool. Brian is pretty pervasive, probably more than even of your other offensive coordinators. And, you know, obviously. That's, that's, that's impressive. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and then the fact that he's your son, you know, adds another layer to that. How, what's your defense of him right now as your I think he's a good football coach. I, I thought Greg Davis was good in 14. He got killed and we ended up, you know, having a pretty good year the next year. So, you know, uh, you know he's a good football coach. And we've had three good coordinators now, in my opinion. And we got to play better. You know, we have to do what we can to help our players, as uh, coaches. We have to do better to uh, try to help them. And we'll try to move forward. But, you know, it's it's easy to point fingers and just, you know, call people out. I don't know. I mean, it's, I don't think I've ever operated that way in 23 years and don't, don't intend to right now. What, um, what can you do to accelerate the growth of your offensive line during this bye week when you have the opportunity maybe to spend um, time yeah, we with We've got to be careful just about how much we do physically. So, you know, love to go five times. That wouldn't be smart and uh, wouldn't be good for the rest of the team too. So we'll, we'll just try to reassess and see what we can do and you know, try to get them playing a little smarter. Again, we made improvement, I thought, last week. I'm not sure. We'll look at the film and see what it looks like, but uh, we'll have it like every week and just try to move them forward. Time for a couple defensive more. Defensive players' spirits up. And, and we have good guys. I mean, we have good guys. You interview them, you talk to them, and uh, if, if they, Jack Campbell was just up here a minute ago, if they come any better than him, you know. So if you have, you have that kind of leadership in front of your room, that makes a big difference. Those guys are in the huddle, and uh, these guys care about each other. That's not just an offensive thing, defensive thing. These guys care about each other. And, uh, Everybody's part of the team, and I think they all understand there's a bigger picture here. You need to look at film, evaluate to see who's going to be quarterback going forward. I'm guessing I know the answer, but you feel good at quarterback. Yeah, right, right now I don't think that was the problem tonight. I mean, as I sit there and watch. So, in fact, I thought Spencer did some good things. Missed a couple throws, and that's probably going to be every quarterback every game. But, um, yeah, my guess is, uh, you know, that, that's what we're going to be doing. But we'll, we'll talk about it.